welcome once again to another edition of our program, Evident Politics, on ATV Channel 50, and of course on Star Times Channel 113. Today, we are going to discuss an issue that has been on the front burner of national discourse. We are talking about Nigerian agitations, the way forward. Some schools of thought hold that agitations in Nigeria is a result of structural defects in the system. That the foundation or the structural underground of the country was not properly made. And some of that said it is as a result of the people of Nigeria who have imbibed the tenets of corruption in such a way that it tends to permeate into all the sectors of Nigeria's national life. Today I have in the studio very eminent personalities who are going to discuss on this topic. And then you sit back and watch them do that. May I introduce from my right, Mazi Sam Ohabunwa. Mazi Sam Ohabunwa is the Chairman, Business Development and Investment Promotion Alibo Development Foundation. You're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. And from my left, may I introduce a man that is always uh, uh, <laughs> on the television nationally, not just on ETV, uh, Chief Tony Nadi. Chief Tony Nadi is the Secretary General of Lower Niger Congress. Congress. No, yeah. chief, no chief at all. Okay. <laughs> Tony, Nadi, Tony Nadi. I'm a legal practitioner. Yeah, Tony Nadi is a lawyer yeah. and the Secretary General of uh, Lower Niger Congress. Congress. You're welcome to the studio. My pleasure. Um, let me start from you, Mazi Ohuabungwa. Yeah. Why do you, what, or why do we have agitations everywhere in Nigeria? Well, um, just as Tony mentioned, I say legal practitioner, I'm a pharmacist, so I'm a healthcare professional. And in healthcare, uh, we do see uh, manifestations of symptoms. And usually what we try to do is to find out what is causing the symptom. Sometimes people treat symptoms. They have headache, they take paracetamol, they have fever, they take chloroquine or atomicinin. But we have people who do diagnosis to find out what the problem is so that we can treat the disease. If you look back since the 60s, we have been having symptoms of an unstable country, a country in disequilibrium. You know, if you have what they call an inverted structure, whereby uh, if you put the, the peak of a pyramid down and l let the base stand up, that pyramid will fall. Uh, I think that it is clear to every right-thinking person that Nigeria is not properly structured. The foundations are not right. And so you have this constant instability, disruptions, and eruptions. And what one will come to a conclusion is, what, is the, what, is the, what, what do we do to make this federation stable? What do we do to make this group of people who have come together as, as, uh, as, as, as a country different nations, different cultures, uh, different persuasions and philosophies wielded together. Maybe the, the weather was not properly done, and so you have fissures and fissures and cracks, and each is causing turbulence. And Nigeria is wobbling from one crisis to another, one crisis to another. A nation that has failed to develop, not because it does not have people who can make it develop, but because the circumstances of the structure have continued to inhibit uh, the total um, manifestation of the potentials of the people. So what you see is symptoms of an instability. And what every right-thinking person, if your house is leaking, cracked, falling, pushed, you need to see what you do. You may have to bring down the, the house and rebuild it, or put new structures to hold it. And if you will face this, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be sad to see that my children, because in all my adult life, I've lived through this. And I wouldn't like my children and grandchildren to also live through it. Thank you, Mas Ohobungwa. And uh, 
from you, Tony, yeah. uh, wh why are there these uh, numerous agitations? Yes, like uh, Mazia pointed out, the diagnosis, uh, by the way, the Lower Niger Congress is uh, the aggregation of the self-determination initiatives across the greater eastern Nigeria, the eastern half of southern Nigeria, meaning the old eastern region and the old midwestern region. But coming together as ethnic uh, nationalities, so we're talking about the Igbo, the Ijo, the Shepri, the Anang, the Efik, all in that uh, block, because um, the the, the, the foundation upon which Nigeria was constructed uh, was flawed fundamentally. And it wasn't by accident that it got flawed. It was because Nigeria was put together as a business venture by the British. They came here very clear-headed in what they were coming to do. It was actually a criminal enterprise if, uh, because we had to, in, in the diagnosis we did in the organization I lead, we went right down to 1914, and we found out that even before the 1914, there were things that had transpired which were not placed on the table for anybody to see. Then Nigeria, the entire territory was the uh, property of uh, Britain. And um, we again found out that in the, permit me to use a, a map to illustrate, uh, in the upper segment of uh, in the upper segment here, we recall that there is a Fulani uh, caliphate. A, the, there was the jihad that brought them to Sokoto and all this. They conquered this territory and were in possession of it, uh, you know, administering it according to their own civilization for almost a hundred years from 1804 to the period uh, when the British that came from the southern flank uh, conquering and, uh, you know, uh, somehow getting hold of the entire south and it was in their push towards north that they met uh, the same caliphate that had reached Elorin and Benue belt you know and like uh, two th because the two came from outside they were here on a common mission to get what they can get for themselves and like two robbery gangs that had to cooperate uh, you know to uh, against a common uh, target the joint venture the, the, what what the, what they did between themselves became a joint venture. The name of that joint venture is Nigeria, and it was formalized in 1914. What was sold to us as amalgamation, what I'm saying is backed by documents in black and white which we got from the archives that were hidden from our fathers. I have been face to face with uh, people like uh, Nohoro in course of this uh, project to ask whether they knew about all of this, and it turned out they did not know because many of them were not born, not even Azikiwe. And on the basis of what they agreed to do together, the, the, the foundation was so late to put uh, that caliphate in charge like an agent, because the British knew they would leave at some point. And they were resisted so fiercely down south. You remember the Oba of Oran Bini? You remember King Jaja in Opobo? A whole number of the resistance was such that uh, they already made up their mind what to do with uh, people from one part as against people from the other part. And what came out as amalgamation was merely an annexation of southern Nigeria to northern Nigeria. And uh, if we recall, I'm sure many of us have, must have heard about uh, the southern lady of means that was uh, to be available to the northern uh, you know, side. And coming from that point in 1914, of course, it was celebrated, the amalgamation in 1914 was celebrated by Doba, Grand Dobas in Zungeru and uh, Sokoto, whereas it was protested in uh, Lagos, the people who knew, because the, nobody was told in the South. It was only the North that knew that such was. It was a German uh, 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 newspaper that leaked it, the, 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 the amalgamation that would be announced on the 1st of January 1914 was a German newspaper that leaked it on the uh, Boxing Day of 1913, that's the day after Christmas. And uh, people, there was no, nothing they could do. The announcement came and there were protests here, there were you know, celebrations there. What was the significance of that? Because one part was going to take hold of uh, the assets of the other part. And uh, the part that uh, you know, would, would, would enjoy that was that not. And 
it was something the British had to put in place and nurture all the way to when they might have to leave. And they made permanent arrangements that will be permanent even when they leave. So as at 2018, they, that joint venture is still cutting away 3 million barrels of crude oil every day against the will of the owners and sharing it over the head shop. And nobody from among the owners is on the table of signing. And you went from 1914 to 1922, the, uh, uh, Littleton, Constitution, Richardson, McPherson, up to 1960. What we saw in 1960 was where they had perfected their art, and um, it, 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 it was to three, the three regions that federated, because that's where it begins to zero down to the constitution we have on the table now. The three regions that federated you know, uh, were like three countries. Nobody knew what they were doing with the other, all the while the colonial thing was on. But it was, uh, it was, uh, it was their decision to keep the union one not the decision of the people who were, so they, all the things they hid from them, by the time they went to, uh, uh, what do they call, Lancaster House uh, discussions in 1957, mm -hmm. you know the Western region already had its own constitution like Germany and France and Portugal that would do European Union. That was the kind of relationship that they agreed upon in 1954 that now became basis of uh, coming to be one country. That level of autonomy, incidentally, you remember that the, 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 the motion for independence was first moved in 1953 by Enohoro, and the North resisted it, in fact blocked it, because they said they were not ready. And the, the, the demands that Amadou Bello made, the eight-point demand that the North made as condition for joining that federation, you know, uh, defined the kind of federation as the level of autonomy that must be in place, because the North they didn't want to be put in a, a you know, straight competition with people who were ahead of them, according to them. And those eight points of demand took uh, from 1953 to 1960 to meet in terms of allowing that level of autonomy for each of the regions. So Nigeria became one country on account of that level of autonomy. What then happened to us in 1966 was where the soldiers for no, the Before owners, you go to 66, yes. couldn't Nigerians, mm -hmm. when they took over and became a republic in 63, of course they made their own constitution. Couldn't mm -hmm. they have restructured the entire arrangement? given the fact that they had the potentials to do their own constitution. If we were to call this ailment from which Nigeria is uh, about to die, unfortunately, if we were to call it a name, it would be called incomplete decolonization. Because it, you, you will recall that the trouble didn't start in 1966. It started right from the independence election that took Awolowo to prison. Some of the things that were done in, in gerrymandering led to a situation where an Awolowo will win an election in his own mind, and the people say it's not so. Of course, we all know that the, the result of the, the, the winner was declared ahead of uh, when the, the votes were fully counted, and Awolowo went to court from there, went uh, plotting. He ended up in prison from that independent election. Okay. The management of the commotion led to the collapse of one leg of the three regions, the constitution of Western region was suspended unconstitutionally by the federal uh, government in, on 29th of May 1962, just to, to like, uh, 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 manage the emergency. It was the suspension of that Western region constitution that, you know, uh, 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 degenerated into uh, when the election came, 64, 65, the Western region was ungovernable. Okay, we will still come back to those yes. uh, historical accounts. Uh, let me ask. Well, let, let me just land it somewhere. That okay. It was, these things are is a chain of events living undone, that which ought to have been done. And but the moment we landed 65 and the soldiers came in 66, it's been a free fall to date. Every other thing has been one parchment or the other. And the, all the agitations we see today uh, you know, the mutations of the kind of, uh, you know, the, there was no difference between what Isaac Boro came to do in Niger Delta from uh, what uh, 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 NDBF of Asari came saying, or what men came saying, or what Avenger came saying. If you go to the Yoruba side, you trace it because I've had the privilege of dealing with the leaders of these agitations, eyeball to eyeball. Ghani Adams, why did you go to OPC? What 
from he may not be a professor of anything, but he was clear headed in the reasons why they had to go fetch arms in order to defend Yoruba land from what they consider the alien uh, you know, invasion. And you go to the eastern side, Asari, why do you go do uh, 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 the kind of thing you're doing? Resource control, they called it. We don't know how people from Kano and Medugri became the owners of our lands and our assets. You know, in the eastern side, Uwazurike, why do you say you can no longer be in Nigeria? I say, how did we agree to be in Nigeria in this kind of treatment we're getting? So having aggregated all of them, we devised a, a, you know, a, something that will reduce it to a, a, you know, a, 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 a constitutional discussion that will, for, that will place questions on the table which people will have to answer. Of course, government refused to listen until we took it from outside government. I'm sure you heard about Pronaco. That was what we went to do for two years. The nationalities that are hurting all over, the, including the north, the far north, all the delegations came and we, we worked out something that could have become our own agreement because the Union of Nigeria was not our agreement at inception. Thank you. Uh, Mazi, oh, yeah. oh, well. yes, the rest of the issue, the Union was not an agreement of the ethnic nationalities in Nigeria. Yeah. And um, as such, the agitations are all over. But uh, since all these agitations, we have had uh, others several uh, uh, coming together. Uh, Abbasanjo held one, as you call them, constitutional conferences. Of course, Jonathan held another. Uh, but they were all a force in futility because while those things were ongoing, uh, the National Assembly who were the representative of the people and constitutionally made together uh, was there and it has always been there and the issue of uh, constitutional reforms can only be done through an enactment and of course none so those things were so why has there been all this holy bully about uh, constitutional conferences or restructuring arrangement and all that and it has never come to fruition well, it is the issue of uh, misalignment in expectations and understanding. Uh, they said a man whose house is burning uh, should not be saying he's chasing a rat. But some people chase rats when their houses are burning. We have different approaches to solving a problem. You can take a radical approach. You can take a conservative approach. You can take all kinds of gradualistic approach. The important is that until a problem is solved, the problem is not solved. The National Assembly uh, all these years have failed to understand the yearning of the people. I'm not talking about this, the ones before. Because of temporary advantages and benefits, they're in a comfort zone and they do not see what me and you see. And so they are excluded or they exclude themselves from their reality. The, when Abbasanjo did his uh, political reform, fortunately I was there in 2005. I was a member, I attended, I was president of NECA uh, at the time, and I came on the platform of the private sector. At the end, uh, some, some gradualistic, uh, conservative approaches were agreed because, you know, you want to manage a situation in the best way to achieve your purpose causing minimum damage but because of understanding or misunderstanding of what that whole thing contained including this attempt popular attempt at the third term the national assembly then rejected both the third term and everything else it's like throwing away the baby and and the, and, and the water the dirty water so that ended that everybody will receive Jonathan uh, Bessinger didn't do it out of love he came to the reality, resisted, but when he found that nothing was happening, there was problem with D, there was OPC, he knew that, the, that you cannot force a solution to a problem except you give the right solution. You know, many doors can open a door, many keys can, can attempt to open a door, but only one key can open it properly. So that failed. Jonathan came. Now some people, the president of the country says he wouldn't read it because he does not see an advantage in it. He believes the whole plan is to work against him and the dominance of the group he represents. You see, today we're in the country. The National Assembly has seen it. 
Benue people have seen it. Uh, you, uh, Taraba people have seen it. Even General, uh, General Jandouma has to come out and speak in an uncharacteristic manner. It is delayed, um, delayed, uh, delayed acceptance of reality. You keep refusing to accept reality, the reality will keep manifesting and will keep worse. We are going worse. That's why I say I don't want my own children, really. That's my worry because for me, thank God, I, uh, uh, God has helped me. Uh, uh, if anything happens to me today, uh, I, I mean, I didn't die during the war. I went to fight the war on behalf of Biafra and I didn't die. God saved me and has given me the grace to live to now. So it's not about me, but it's about the future. We need to solve Nigeria. And it's better we solve it in a constitutional manner that, that uh, my friend has spoken about, instead of killing. And that's what you see is when you stop people for agreeing by peaceful means, they adopt violent means. That's the way. People are saying, let's do it constitutional. Let the nationalities come together. If the nationalities come together, Lower Niger Congress, okay, I've been talking about referendum. Referendum is an open thing. If we do a referendum and people say, no, we're happy with this, then let's be happy with it. But it will have been a decision of the people. If they say they are not happy, then let them be. God that created us did not create us and call us Nigeria. God did not call us any name. He created us as people and put us in our different sections as groups, as nations. We need to associate. If the current association is not working, can we rearrange it so that we don't end up killing ourselves and destroying what God has given to us? Is it not evident to every Nigerian that something is wrong? Can you explain what is going on? Can you? Oh. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Mm. It is uh, inexplicable. Um, um, Tony, mm. I have heard him. Yeah. So what in your mind are the options available for us to achieve what we ought to achieve. Yes. You know, what are the options available in terms of, uh, uh, you know, restructuring? If, for instance, the National Assembly do not do an enactment, uh, the idea of uh, calling people together, ethnic nationalities together for a meeting is a jamboree, except it is enacted that uh, the outcome will automatically become implementable. Okay. So, what do you think? What's your take on that? The, un unfortunately, the mediocrity and dishonesty that have been embedded in the system from the onset, because they were, I was sharing with some uh, group yesterday, all the things that are upside down in Nigeria were deliberately introduced, including this mediocrity that we see in which a quota system puts you down in order to allow the man who is not fit to clean your shoes to be on top. The matter of preferring falsehood to truth, in which we saw our constitution's uh, preamble saying that we, the people, made a constitution the whole world knew we didn't make. The, the, the question of, uh, you know, we, we're shouting corruption and impunity, they all have foundations in this constitution intended to be so. And it didn't start with this constitution. It started from the original foundation to place the government above the people, to place the judiciary and their decisions above, you know, below the executive. And, you know, like I said, the criminal, the objective of the criminal enterprise, you know, was to legitimize the looting, large scale looting that has to take place. And all the constitutional instruments were made to service that uh, you know objective you have a section I, I i have your question in mind what do we do but we're saying that we have in black and white inside this constitution in section six subsection six c a provision that you know relieves the government of responsibility towards the citizen unlike what it is in all other countries where government must provide this and that you know for citizens but that one says well when it's convenient for government. So government does not owe the citizen school, hospital, road, anything at all under that because not that even section. Not even security. Not even security. Not that section nullifies the whole of chapter two, where all the good things for citizens you know, uh, are listed. Now, you come to section, uh, for, to the appropriation provisions. Section 81 requires the president to go to National Assembly to uh, obtain permission to spend any money you know, from the Treasury. 
Section 82 authorizes the same president to keep running government, you know, spending money as the debate for appropriation. That's why we are in, uh, 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 we are in the second quarter of uh, 2018, and there's no budget yet passed. Yet billions and billions of naira dollars, you know, have been taken and spent because of that provision. In order, you hear about America uh, uh, shutting down, uh, government shutting down all the time, if they have a difficulty about it. So, so in all of this, the, these things were embedded, of course, in punity. Uh, the, 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 the immunity provision is such that those who are in charge of that treasury, because that appropriation puts the spare key to the treasury in the hands of the executive branch. The 37 men whose signature move all the money in the treasury, you know, can, can go at their own time. And nobody can question them what they are doing until they leave office. So between this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, uh, not having obligation to the citizen, having the spare key to the treasury, and having immunity, all deliberately designed to service the main objective, to steal. When they gather in Abuja every month, sharing 600 billion uh, uh, naira, it, it, not, no part of it is meant for the, so you saw you see the people who from 1999 those who have gone to represent whether they are governors or senators you've seen their lifestyles you know Change. opulence increasing even local and government the, chairman, even local government councillors so and you see the the, the condition of the All season the going you know going right down now where does that bring us to say the, the options are available to us we spent 15 years continuous to work out all of what could have been the solution in accepting, in getting the system to accept, like South Africa did, with apartheid constitution. There's no difference whatsoever between, well, in fact, this is worse than apartheid. In apartheid, you were sure of who the enemy was, the white man, and the, 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 the blacks knew where to draw their line. But here, it's all so mixed up, you can't even identify who the enemy is. And what Nigeria must do is to accept that we did not make this instrument of death for ourselves. Okay. Yeah, and Nigerians. To then, to then work out what will be the replacement of it. Okay. And Nigeria is not sacrosanct in that circumstance. We must, <coughs> if you go to the preamble, you will see the nature of what must be done. We, the people, having made this constitution, you know, it's, a, it's like memo and articles of a company. The memo creates the company. Thank the you. The article. Thank you. So uh, we, we we'll will come back we'll to come that. Back to that um, Nigerians, uh, is, Nigeria, is, uh, Nigeria is in question know. now. Nigeria is now in question so on account of whether we have submitted was ourselves to not this. made by the people. Yes, we've not, whether uh, we have agreed to be in this union. Yeah, let us uh, pause for a break. When we come back, we shall continue. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. My guests are still here in the studio. And I guess that you are finding or having a good time with uh, the discussions here. I still have uh, Mazi, Saab, Ohabunwa. And, of course, uh, Tony, Nadi, Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were yes. on. I was developing uh, oh. the, the, the nature of what we have to deal with yes, in, solving in solving the, the, option that, that it's the options available. Something, defi something that defines the options for us. Beautiful. So you have the, to do that now yes. before I move over to Sam. Yes. We constitution, constitution, constitution. Unfortunately, uh, we, the mediocrity has uh, come to where even professors of law and senior advocates in Nigeria and justices of the Supreme Court do not understand what a constitution is anymore because of the deficiency they have in uh, jurisprudence. And I've had the displeasure, or let me say misfortune, of having to take on some of them publicly to say, who taught you this kind of jurisprudence? Because they, they themselves are taught two or three generations of people who have become professors of law, misleading the, you know, generations of uh, lawyers, who some of who are now senators, thinking they know what they are discussing. The, the, the constitution is to the country what the memo and article is to the company. The memo and article are two different documents. The memo creates the company where A, B, and C sit together to form an enterprise and it is called XYZ Limited. The article then defines 
what happens between the owners of XYZ Limited. If you if you do not recognize, uh, you know that uh, one must be before the other can be, you will continue to think uh, they are just uh, the same document you can tamper with uh, anyhow. What went wrong with us is that the the constitutions that were federated, that's the agreement that brought us together, which got truncated in 1966, which took us to Aburi. The meeting in Aburi was to restore the agreement. And they did agree, and then one party came and threw it away and began to kill. Till date, we've not gone back to agreeing to be in this, because it is in that agreeing to be in one union that we now go to the second uh, uh, leg of uh, articles to put a constitution to define, to, to write down all of how it will be done. Which is why the constitution starts with a, a preamble that we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved to live in unity as one indivisible uh, uh, sovereign nation, that is the memo. The article begins from do hereby make and give unto ourselves the following constitution. If you have not resolved this, has, has the jaw sat down with the Ogoni and the, and the Anang and the Efik and the Thief and the Fulani? That is what the situation requires. And if you think I'm exaggerating, it is here by the admission of those who impose this uh, constitution on us. They say, Federal Republic shall be a state based on principles of the. It is section hereby what, according to section, section 14.2a. It is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria, from whom government, through this constitution, derives all its powers and authority. Meaning that until the people, the jaw, the the Doma, the team, sit down and submit their land, just like ABC come to submit their assets to form XYZ Limited. Until that happens, no instrument thrown up can, take, can become a constitution for all of those who become trapped, because it's an entrapment now. And therefore, in the face of this you know, universal truism, this, the authors of this document claim that we, the people, have done all of that agreeing, agreeing, which is where they say we solemnly resolve to live together as one individual. That's why they tell us every time it's indivisible, indissoluble, and hereby make unto us a, a given. But that is not the whole story. The, 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 there's a decree number 24 that brought about the, the constitution, where the author narrated the story of how he made the constitution, Absalom Abaka. He said he called a committee that went round and decided uh, on a retaining 1979 constitution, which he added and subtracted at his Supreme Council and uh, the rest of what that's, that is in black and white. And we've taken it before the court to say, in the face of this, this uh, admission here, this claim cannot stand. And to date, we went in 2007 with 10 plaintiffs that included Nohoro, Ojuku, Ono, Shoyinka, uh, uh, Bankoloki, it's late now. Abeyebe, uh, Asari, uh, he was standing trial for treason, was really standing trial for treason to say, we did not make this constitution on account of this, this uh, admission by the authors, and that unless we agree to be in a union, nobody can, nobody can accuse anybody of wrongdoing for rejecting Nigeria, because all the agitations, back to, your, to the topic, all the agitations in the country represent one uh, uh, you know, rejection process of that constitution in one form or the other across. You understand? So we must come to where we admit, like South Africa did with apartheid, that this imposition is not serving anybody any purpose. The country is not only gone right down, it's heading towards where anarchy will overtake everybody. Because if you go killing people and you expect that they will not respond, you are just wasting your time. They're going to respond, and it might escalate. Thank you. Thank you. Mazi Ohapuma. Yes, please. What's your take on giving a structure if you still believe in Nigeria? Or otherwise, are you one of the persons that believe in self-determination? No, I think self-determination is, is an inalienable right. We are created and Jesus Christ died, shed his blood to set us free. Since then, we are free. Any association I enter, I enter voluntarily. You can force me, like he called it an entrapment, because you use arms and force, and I'll pretend that I am there with you, but my mind is not there. So all this, all this, this matter is a very simple matter. I'm just pained that a simple matter is being made to look like 
a difficult matter. Why can't people of Nigeria sit together and say, this union is not working. The arrangements are yielding problems. We are not moving forward. Our economy is not moving forward. Corruption is growing. People are hating each other, killing each other. Why can't we sit down? Somebody is president and leader of a country. I wish I was president of this country. This matter will be ended in one week. In my home, I get home, there's trouble. My wife is quarreling, my children, everybody's killing, and I'm just aloof and hoping that the problem will solve itself. Where, where has that ever happened? And then we're we just taking it on. Somebody will get up and say, it's okay. For me, it's not okay. I think that God should help to give revelation knowledge and understanding to our leaders, political leaders today, because they have the arms, they have the forces of coercion. Call the people who own the country and say, how do we solve this problem? Which is a simple thing. Do you want to be together? You say yes, I say yes. Do you want to be together? He says no. Okay, go. Those of us who want to be together, we'll be together. We then say, how do we be together? What do we do to relate to ourselves? That's the way it is. Even the no can be, no, so, even the no can be say, what would you like to have? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I mean, the British joined the European Union. Now, sometimes they say they don't want to be again. The people ask them, they are called Prime Minister, say, do you want... By imagine on one or two percent, they say they don't want. They are living in European Union. Tomorrow they may decide to go back if they feel so. But it is what the people want. The Prime Minister May did not originally support living European Union, but she has implemented because she is she is obedient to the will of the people. That is the way it is. Return sovereignty to the owners of the country. Nobody has the power to force. The other. If you force me by power of arm, I mean, they say you can take a horse to a river. But can you force it to drink? Uh, force it to drink. So it's a simple matter. I don't know why it's complicated. Uh, it's just a fear of people not willing to be fair to others who want to retain an advantage which was unlawfully constituted and derived. And out of that selfishness, they are willing to let the country burn, unfortunately. And it's so painful because it's in everybody's interest, everybody, and I mean it, everybody from the north to south, that will stop this carnage and this top uh, 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 roller coaster country we are running in. Can you tell me when I have not faced crisis in my adult life from 1966, 64? When I, when I became politically conscious, 64 to now, it's one crisis after another, one crisis after another. Why? If it's not economic, it's political, it's not social. It's, why don't we say, this experiment is not working. Let's go to, you know, basics. Let's return to the drawing board. Simple, just as three of us are seated here. We are not, we're not from the same town. We may not even from the same state. So we sit down and look at the reality. I believe that God gave you sense, gave me sense. We say, look at, okay, how do we do this? Okay, this is what I want. This is what you want. What do you give? What do I give? We come to agreement. We sign. And we have come here on behalf of our people, not that we chose ourselves. And that's all that is being asked. Attempts have been made, as you said, by your passenger, even though that was not the best. People resisted it. But it was a better attempt than nothing. Uh, Jonathan did his own attempt. Again, like I said, you can solve problems different methods. You can start gradually. You can do radically. But what it is, let the problem be solved. Let there be a realization that this thing, is, when you're forcing us to stay, Nigeria cannot, uh, unity cannot be questioned, in a level this, that's what people will be telling us. And then they are killing people using soldiers, or soldiers are killing other people, individuals are killing other people. I weep for my country. I weep for this country that we are in called Nigeria. I weep because there's so much injustice and, and, and wickedness. And they do not know that the blood of every innocent that is being shed on this, uh, in this country see, is crying for, for, for vengeance. And when we begin to see it, we are alarmed. We have shed blood from 1966, innocent blood. We may ripped open, split through. For what? For what? That you came from an ethnic group. Is that a cause? Are you forced into a union? So that's a problem. You move from home to, to practice unity of the country by going around to do your business or trade. It's a crime. And yeah, you want to go home. They will say, don't go home. What kind of a thing is that? And God is watching us. And when we see the consequences of that wickedness, I people are wondering what is causing it. I think my desire and my prayer is that somebody will listen to this conversation and say, 
let us solve a problem. And the only way to solve this problem is bring the people together, tell them to say what they want, make sure we ask people. Even after we have agreed, we, we, we may not represent the people. We go back to people and say, these three people you called have agreed. Do you agree? That's what they call referendum or plebiscite or whatever. Do you agree with what they say? They say yes. Then if they say no, they are sovereign. It doesn't matter what we feel. I've told you May. There is a May he did not agree on. He didn't vote. But he's not implemented it because he's respected the sovereign. That's why he has peace in the UK. If she resisted because it may, it may not suit her or it may not pr promote her own party. I'm asking that I should be statesman. There should be men in Abuja who rise above ethnicity, who rise above religion, who are looking at themselves as holding the mandate given to them by God. It would be a terrible thing that history will write them as a time they led this country when in this state. People are being killed and murdered in the church, in the mosque, in the, in the road, everywhere. Nigeria is unsafe and somebody came, came to give us safety. Today, people are flaunting, we came here to give you security. What, is, what, what kind of security do we have that we didn't have in 2014? What kind of it? So, I, I think we should stop deceiving ourselves and face the truth. But if we refuse to face the truth, too, uh, <laughs> the consequences. The Bible says if you sow to the flesh from the flesh, you reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit from the spirit, you reap eternal life. Uh -huh. It gives you alternative. Choose which one. But when you've chosen the one, don't ask yourself what is happening. Because it is your choice that has led us here. We have been choosing the wrong road to travel. That is why you have you turn on the road. When you are traveling on the road, road, you get to somewhere, you say, look, let me be sensible. Let me make a U turn. This is the time to make a U turn. Go back to where we started. Plot our journey again. Decide where to go and how to go in safety and arrive. And Mars is someone who advocates for a U turn for Nigeria. Yeah, we have a National Assembly in place. Yes. And uh, the National Assembly are the representative of the people. Yes. And the people ceded their sovereignty by way of voting. So uh, don't you think that the moment you cede your franchise by voting, these are the representatives of the people? So how can anything that could be done be done by these representatives of the people who are already existing constitutionally? That is, again, uh, one of the wrong narratives at law in jurisprudence. The National Assembly has nothing to do with uh, the issues being raised. The constitution, this constitution we are rejecting because that's what's going on now. We spent the first 15 years doing, I'm sure you, you heard about Pronaco. Pronaco was where we left government aside and called the owners of Nigeria to come to discuss whether they want to live together and if so, how. It took us two years 164 ethnic delegations that turned up. We sat in Lagos, sat in Portacos, sat in Enugu, sat in uh, Jos, went to Kano, came to Lagos to conclude. The American Administration sent observer mission, European Union sent observer mission. The federal government of Nigeria, Obasanjo Joho, was looking for how to be live president. He, he first said we were committing treason, and then uh, when he saw the crowd, he pulled back, and uh, we managed to come to you know, uh, an outcome because we asked everybody Everybody was afraid to raise that question because they thought uh, every day. people said, well, we want to only, only the Eastern, uh, some the mashup uh, at the time, because those who were already carrying arms, as at that time, against the state, were all persuaded to put their arms aside. Ghanaian dams and his APC, uh, OPC, uh, uh, Sari and his uh, volunteer force, we persuaded them to put their guns aside and come to discuss with the rest of the country. And they did come. And we had delegates from all over the country, including the, the Sokoto and Katsina, at, al, along the line, Buhari himself was one of those who came. The man who is now Sultan in Sokoto was one of those who came. I dealt with them face to face with Enohoro. And we, 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 we found a solution that could have restored us to being a federation, because yeah. we're no longer a federation. Yeah. Nigeria ceased to be a federation in 1966. Yeah. All other things have been by brutal force. And a federation is simply a union of constitutions. Yes. The moment you throw away those constitutions and you, you, you become the owner of the asset, mm. you, have, you, have, you have become a sovereignty yeah. like Britain was over the sovereign spaces that uh, they amalgamated. And so we, we did all of this to try to save the union and put it back on track. But those who feel that there's a feudalist culture somewhere of 
master and servant. Again, in this same uh, map, these are feudalists. And they also complicated the problem by adopting Sharia. That's a new preliminary objection. They adopted Sharia simultaneously in this contiguous belt in year 2000, began to implement it, chopping up people's hands, dislocating other people. I can no longer function in Sokoto or Kano or Medugri because Sharia is in place. Meanwhile, those from those parts are able to function in Portacot and Lagos, you know, Therefore, the union is shortchanging me on that account. And since they owe it a duty of faith to kill the infidel, we may pretend about that. And we can see the killings going on all the while. We are saying that, are we to continue to be available to be killed in the name of maintaining a union that was uh, clearly a mischief by Britain? And we said, some of us now said, OK, if it has become impossible after 50 years, because the, the issue in Aburi was to restructure back to being a federation. If after 50 years we've not been able to find you know, a resolution in that manner, some of us then moved on to the next step. So when they say now uh, 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 that they will, they, they will make the country ungovernable if power is not returned to them, and they began to kill our people. In 2011, that was when this broken map in right? The rest of us outside the, the, outside the, 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 the territory that adopted Sharia, because I do not know what answer anybody can provide for Sharia that will make me be in the same union with people who owe it a duty to kill me. And we called a meeting of the rest to say, since these ones are not willing to come back uh, to the discussion table, and they tell us every time, you see Angu Abdullah is talking nonsense every day, that they, they, they have the right to come. You saw El Rufai saying that we cannot be a, a, in a union of equality, that they, are, they, they conquered us. El Rufai government cardinal. So we said, OK, in that case, we, we acknowledge your right to self-determination to go and do the Sharia you have embraced amongst yourself. Let the rest of us go and find what we do. Since the constitution that brought us together is no more. And it was within that discussion that these three decided to first work out their charters, their constitutions. You saw the Yoruba go to a solemn assembly the other day to say that they reject this constitution as the basis of Nigeria. Now people are discussing the election that will renew the life of this constitution without any regard for all of these <coughs> vehement repudiations of this constitution. Meanwhile, there's the a United Nations instrument that governs this kind of situation that entitled everybody to their right to self-determination. And we say, let these ones, these ones already exercise their right. They seceded from the Union of Nigeria, you know, the secular Union of Nigeria from the moment they simultaneously adopted the Sharia. And we didn't see any serious resistance amongst their people. So we take it that that is what they prefer. We also are now heading to our own self-determination. So we're no longer struggling. Those who want to preserve the Union of Nigeria on the basis of this apartheid constitution will have to work hard to achieve it. We are doing everything possible under the sun to shoot down this constitution that makes us slaves in our land. So why do they actually want to preserve the Union, even when they wanted to go their separate ways? They still want to impose. That's, 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 so that's, why that's, is it so? That's, that's what they, 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 the answer will have to come from them. But as far as we are concerned, the Federation of Nigeria that collapsed since 1966, which they took to Aburi to revive, it came back alive a little, but they put it to death almost immediately after, and now impose unitarism on all of us. That Federation no longer exists. And we have endured all of what could be endured on all fronts. But this one of having to endure death, which you see the whole of Middle Belt and is coming into the eastern side, and because the people who are doing it are the ones who have declared themselves the master race that must own all of, all of us and our assets, we then say, no, we will seek to exercise our right to be by ourselves, which this instrument guarantees. I was directly involved in the processes uh, that led to the emergence of this instrument, in all in an attempt to solve this problem without uh, having to go to any new war. We've, we've, has, not, is, has there not been enough of bloodshed? 3.5 million people got killed in Biafra for the same reason. So we're saying that if after 50 years we have not found any solution, we must now come to where those who are trapped will have to you know, uh, find a way to extricate themselves so I'm no longer, the Nigeria that is defined by this constitution is no longer my project. I am working 24 hours to put that Nigeria to death. Those who want to preserve it are doing their best and their worst, killing people all over the place to reconquer the territories. That's what's going on. And we had Danjuma, who should know, 
telling us that it is an ethnic cleansing business that is going on. Are we to wait to be killed or before we begin to say what we should say? National Assembly has no business in uh, negotiating our sovereignty over our head because the, the, the institution itself was a creation of this fraud. And therefore, they do not, rep they do not their mandate does not include the, cons the, 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 the constituent powers required to make a it. Just like suggesting, your suggestion of National Assembly is like suggesting that the hired management of a company, you have a company, and your staff gang up and overthrow the memo and article, overthrow you and put in a new memo and article. That's what happened to us in 1966. And those staff are now saying that we can no longer, we the owners of the company, can no longer come to where they are discussing what will happen to the company. They will have to decide the, for us. Yes, the owners are now sitting under the mango tree, <laughs> and that is where I'm secretary. <laughs> Ijo is sitting there, Ugoni is sitting there, Yoruba is sitting there, the whole of Middleburg is sitting there. We are saying we will dissolve our company since we can no longer you know, discuss how to proceed with the company. We we'll deserve our company if we no longer unless know something happens. The, yeah. the, the, the first, the the first order of, of business, the first order of business is to put this constitution as like South Africa did. We are not anarchists. Those in government house can remain because that's the that's the kind of uh, blackmail. The, the South Africa in 1990, after 80 years, under Frederick de Klerk, if Nigeria does anything less, this union will go up in smoke. I pray it doesn't consume more human lives. Let us accept we do not have a constitution. Let's discuss and, and agree on what we want to do, and let's uh, banish uh, violence from the table. Mercy. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, my Lord. I do not know if we're going to exhaust this uh, topic within the time frame. But all the same, what is the way forward for Nigeria? Uh, if I have to repeat myself, the way forward is a simple way our leaders now should come down from the high horse. They are not high horse, and they are not hearing us, but they are watching our misery, and everyone's a issue statement, condoling with us for our misery, for premature death, for destruction of property and asset. Brethren, when do we get to the point to know that people have failed to manage? I used to be a CEO of a Pfizer and name it. I go to a point and I say, I've done enough. Let younger people come and take over so that they can bring new. I think that is clear to those managing our country now that they have failed. I don't need, you don't need to put it to an exam. What is the purpose of government? It's failed. Why have they failed? It's because of the refusal to listen to the true problem pro uh, uh, troubling our country. And I am begging them that it is, we're not, we don't want anybody to kill each other. We're not forcing anything on anybody. It is, let's sit down and agree. And when the money sovereignty returns to the owners of the company, as, uh, as, as Tony Riley pointed out, the owners of the company will now say, okay, this is the way we want to arrange our company. After that, they will call a new management or the same one and say, okay, come and run. This is the way it will now go. But I don't know why that is the, own, the current managers think it is to their own disadvantage if they accept what the owners of the company are saying. And you know when this thing happens, there will always be interests. People who are benefiting, they will not surrender easily. That's why sometimes all those who have taken arms in the past, it's not justified, but they, that's the only way they could be had. If Asari didn't care, who would have about Niger Delta Development Agency, Ministry of Niger Delta, and so forth and so on? It would not have happened. I'm not supporting that, but couldn't we avert that by just getting the people? So I would stop responding. That's what happened. Now, Boko Haram is killing in the Northeast. We have set up Niger Northeast Development Commission. So we wait for destruction to happen, then we'll try to correct it. Why can't we prevent it? By simple calling the people and say, decide how this country, I don't think this thing is working. Can you people agree? All the past leaders resisted it until they were forced. I just hope that this particular leader will not resist it until he gets forced, because he may not have the same opportunities others had. Thank you. And in a nutshell, um, just, you know, we are running out of time. Just tell us exactly what you think is the answer. First order of business, to accept that we have no constitution binding us to which allegiance can be pledged. Those who swear to defend and uphold this constitution, whether they are councillors or senators or governors or presidents, are swearing to 
keep us in our enslavement. And when this thing will burst open, the way, the, when it will become much more you know, confused to manage, the enemy will not be that one from uh, the border with Cameroon from Alpha. The enemy I will identify is that one doing political party and waiting to contest another election under this constitution we have all rejected because he's doing so in search of what he will get for himself. And we're pleading with all of them to accept that we can no longer proceed to any elections under this constitution. Let this constitution be put aside. Let there be a transitioning that will, that will take, you know, the, the, the people in government house, whether they are governor or president, remains National Assembly for transitional, exactly like South Africa did with apartheid constitution. If we do not do that, every day they postpone it, they are making the exponentially increasing the possibility of the matter ending up in fiasco, because that's where it's going. Thank you. Postponing the suspension put away, put away the national, is the like, 2019 election is, that is being advertised on the basis of this fraud, because the owners of the land are going to resist the continued operation of this constitution in any way they find, because okay. this is a source of death. Okay, postponing uh, discussion and the dialogue amongst the ethnic groups in Nigeria is like postponing the evil day. And that is where we call it a day on today's program and from Mazi Mas Sam Ohabungwa. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed the discussion. From Tun Nadi. Thank you very much. I am Rex Aruma, and of course, uh, those behind the lines are my producer. I thank you for being there with us. <laughs>